sometimes the reason we laugh is because it's a signal we're all having a good time here, right? This is no one's getting hurt. We're all having a good time here. And it seemed particularly appropriate appropriate to mention that right before we bring out George Singleton, because George is one of the funniest guys I know. But he's going to hurt you a little bit too and make you think. And that's good stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, George Singleton. All right, why did they invite me here? Maybe the powers that be believe like Samuel Beckett, the Irish playwright, that there's nothing funnier than human misery. <laughs> or maybe they thought, yeah, George is all for literacy, because literacy can probably save racism and murder and everything else in the United States. Our taxes, taxes uh, are not keeping our schools open. That's not funny. Uh, I want to thank Vegan, by the way, for doing my hair. <laughs> I've been writing these short stories the last few years about a guy named Stet Looper, S-T-E-T. -E Stet means let it stand in uh, the editorial world, and I use that word Stet a lot in the margins because New York editors don't understand Southernisms, and I have, shut up, I know what I'm talking about. Um, here's a Stet story that's mean, it's called Sponsor, it's an epistolary. I have not forgotten you. In close, please find my monthly check that pays for your lunches. I've also added an extra $4 so that Miss Anna can buy more paper and crayons and an extra dollar so that she can buy a pen. Please tell her it's not a good idea to address envelopes with pencil. Anyway, your picture showed up finally, and I have to say I'm proud to be sponsoring such a talented group of artists. I hope all is well in the corridor of shame. I got some of my friends to write our state representatives, and we all wrote that we wouldn't mind paying more in taxes to get y'all one of those broken, to get y'all out of those broken down schoolhouses. I like that picture of the bursting pipes that you sent, Shamika. Is that Don Quell's eyeball floating up toward the ceiling after the hot water hit him in the face? It's very lifelike. Is that your dog standing in the corner? Do they let y'all bring your pets in the school, or was it some kind of rabid fox that just showed up one morning before the pipes burst? If it's a rabid fox, then I need to know so I can write my state representative another letter. Tell Miss Anna to tell y'all about rabies shots. My ex-wife acts like she needs a rabies shot. That's part of the reason why I haven't written sooner. She tried to come back home after saying that she went off up north to have our baby, but as it ended up, she wasn't pregnant the entire time. I know, I know, who says she's pregnant but really isn't? Most people say they're not pregnant, then go off somewhere to have a baby and start a new life. Not my ex-wife. She went all the way up to Minnesota in order to see a speech therapist so she could later become a TV reporter. Do any of y'all have speech impediments? If you do, there's nothing to be embarrassed or ashamed of. Some of America's great leaders and thinkers had speech impediments. I can't think of any right now, but trust me on this one. Anyway, my wife came back home without a baby or a lisp, and I let her know right away how I felt about what she put me through. I told her she made me forget to send you all the $16 to pay for your lunch for a whole month. I said, when I decided to sponsor 32 third graders down at that elementary school on I-95, I made a vow to myself that I would not forget them like everyone else had forgotten to forget them. Well, I know that not everyone's forgotten you. Barbara Walters, she's an American leader with a speech impediment. <laughs> I thought of one, she's on TV. Evidently my ex-wife didn't even consider how Barbara Walters didn't pretend to be pregnant and go up to Minnesota, etc. If I think of others, I'll put them at the end of this letter. I also like that picture that you sent along to me, Ben. Ben, are you white? I don't want to make any stereotypes. Oh, and I added another $5.95 so Miss Anna can buy a paperback dictionary in case she can't explain big words like stereotype to y'all. But everyone else in the class has names that sound different than Ben. When I look at y'all's names, there's no one who even has a one-syllable name. Ben is one syllable. My ex-wife would have made it two syllables back before she went to the speech therapist. <laughs> she would have said Ben. I don't know why. She kind of sounded drunk all the time, even when she wasn't. She, she said things like step for step and scoundrel for scoundrel. She called me scoundrel quite a few times when I decided to go get my low residency master's degree 
in Southern culture studies, let me tell y'all. But words like shivering, she could say just fine. If she would have been there with y'all when the hot water pipe spewed open, she would have said, I bet they're not shivering cold. She could have said that just fine. I've been meaning to take a drive down that way and drop in to see what kinds of lunches my $16 gets. I can't imagine that's much. Notice how I add an extra $2 to the check? That's in hopes it will get you maybe at least once a week an orange. Oranges are good to protect, protect against scurvy from what I remember. They're good for something. One time a long time ago, maybe I drank too much. I bet some of y'all have relatives who drink too much. And my ex-wife came home from the store with a gigantic bag of oranges. It was in one of those mesh-looking bags. I think she bought them on a whim from some school children, much like y'all, holding a fundraiser there in the parking lot of the grocery store. You would think that a grocery store wouldn't want people selling food in their parking lot, but that's how it is around here. Everybody's trying to be a do-gooder. I need to talk to the grocery stores and see if they can sponsor y'all maybe, or at least promise to send down a couple bags of rice or oatmeal. Anyway, my wife came back with one of those giant mesh bags and she saw me sitting there at my desk trying to think up a good thesis or a future dissertation. Have Miss Anna open up the dictionary now for my low residency master's degree in Southern Culture Studies, and the next thing you know, I'm getting pelted with oranges. Oranges might look all soft and squishy, but let me tell you, they can hurt if they hit right around the eye socket over and over. <laughs> $16 divided by 32 students is only 50 cents, and then you have to divide that by 30 for the average days in a month. That's only two cents a day. How can y'all eat food for less than two cents a day? I know that things are cheaper down there in the lower part of the state, but still. <laughs> Wait, y'all don't go to classes 30 times in a month. It would be 20 times, so that's two and a half cents a day. Never mind. <laughs> you can see that although I'm your sponsor, maybe I wasn't all that smart when it came to mathematics and economics. I've added another couple dollars to the monthly check so Miss Anna can get y'all a good slide ruler too, which can teach math better than anything. It's better than an abacus, I promise. That's why we're better than Chinese students when it comes to mathematics. <laughs> Quintella, I noticed that in your picture you only use the black and blue crayons. You know that a psychotherapist entrenched in both Freudian and Jungian, Miss Anna, get out dictionary, studies might consider the symbolic dictionary of your home life or past home life. Is that a man pumping gas into his Hummer? I can't quite tell. I've never been good at figuring out pictures. Is it a woman in a motel bed talking to a man who's a policeman? Is it a foreboding dictionary sky bearing down on a fire ant mound? Is it an oil slick on blacktop? Do y'all have asphalt down there or only dirt roads still? If it's a woman in a motel bed, I hope the man's wearing a prophylactic dictionary, a condom <laughs> dictionary, a rubber. I have a funny feeling that my ex-wife spent some time in, time in a motel room up in Minnesota. If she gets pregnant for real this time, I guess we'll all know. One time I took a test that involved Rorschach tests. I'm not sure that's in the dictionary. And everything looked like a pistol to me. That's why I say that I have never been good at figuring out pictures. Is it a picture of a magnolia tree dying? I'm going to put it up on my refrigerator, dictionary, no matter what. Finally, I want to tell all of you that you shouldn't be concerned or feeling bad or embarrassed or battered by anyone having to start up a nonprofit organization called South Carolinians Against the Corridor of Shame. You will rise out of the muck. You will rise out of the mud. You will rise out of the hypocrisy. You will rise out of those ex-tobacco fields. You will rise out of the sideways glances. You will rise out of accusatory accusations. Leon, is that a picture of our stupid governor standing behind a tree playing with himself? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> he doesn't like public education. A lot of rich Christians don't seem to like public education. That might be a gigantic generalization and stereotype. You don't have to look in the dictionary again, seeing as you know that word. It seems to me funny, though, that all these Christians hate Charles Darwin, but all they do is practice and promote something called survival of the fittest. They won't even feed stray dogs. Anyway, back on subject, me, I live in a house that doesn't even have a hallway or corridor, but let me tell you that my ex-wife made me believe that I tread daily inside a corridor of shame just because I wanted to better myself with a low residency master's degree. The SCACS 
can be spelled backwards, by the way. That's called a palindrome. Ask Miss Anna about palindromes. Tell Miss Anna I haven't forgotten her. Ask her if she has a boyfriend. <laughs> Cordially, Stet, enclosed $30.95. P.S. Truman Capote. Thanks. Thank you.